We are so glad to be with you, Christian life. And he is worthy of praise. Amen. Amen. He's worthy of honor, and we're going to give him honor tonight in song. So God bless Sister Pam and Brother Woody as they come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, mm -hmm. 
starting our day off, asking him to help us along the way and asking him, Lord, let thy will be done for our life today that we may be able to be a blessing to somebody, to be able to pray for somebody, even and smile at somebody because you could make somebody's day. Mansion over the hill time. my sister's favorite song. She always loved it. It's called Forever Changed. And she said, you know, when I first heard this song, it made me cry. 
because there were so many people that when I went came and to the Lord, there was a lot of people that made remarks, oh, she won't last. How many people that's ever heard that out there in um, internet land has heard that about your life? You know, it doesn't matter what people say. As long as God accepts you, God loves you, and God brings forth the change in your life, and that's what counts, and I'm so thankful. <clears throat> now there were those who said I'd surely fall when I told them I'd given Jesus my all and I guess I really
I feel like I'm changing daily. And he renews in me a right spirit every day. And you know, it doesn't matter what the doctors say. Mm -hmm. I feel great. <laughs> and and, and I, I, I felt so good today. You know, God's hand is a healing hand and a touching hand. And it doesn't matter what the future holds. I know that one day we're all going to be with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> That's right. Amen. Amen. Thank everybody so much. He's wonderful, isn't he? Yes, he is. Wonderful to sing about. He doesn't leave us the same. Whatever we bring into the house tonight or whatever we bring watching this, he changes. He doesn't leave us the same when he finds us. And I'm, I'm blessed to be reminded of that tonight, that we are born again, made new. And we have a hope tonight, and we're going to talk a little bit about that hope in spite of oppositions that we have. And that's where our message will go for us tonight. I just share with us just briefly, just continue to lift up, lifting up folks in prayer, Sister Jamie and others. I don't know if you're, some others are watching tonight out there on Facebook, Roger and others. I know that I have watched, but we, we love you. Let us know. Glad to hear always if you're watching. Glad to hear we're praying for you, and we believe for uh, good things for what God's doing in your lives. And so we look forward to some good things in the church, some different Different things we'll have coming up here for us, some special speakers that will be, be with us in the in the weeks ahead, and also some good fun times that we'll have as a church, and then some, some ministry that we're looking at. We pray God's direction. There's all kinds of possible open doors. We know he's got the right one for us that will be open, and so we trust him. And we believe that for everybody watching, too, tonight. But sometimes we're opposed. And that's where we are tonight. And this is in 2 Chronicles 32, if you're following along in, in your Bibles tonight. 2 Chronicles 32. And we'll begin in verse number 1. Sometimes we wish we could say we could just go on through and do the work that we need to do and it'd be smooth. That will happen someday. But it's not today. It's not today, is it? <laughs> we, we look forward to that day when He comes for us again and as it was in the Garden of Eden, it will be again. But right now, we have an opposition. Folks, people, spiritual forces, there's opposition that we have. And we do talk about that tonight. And we've been talking about a king named Hezekiah. As we've gone through the kings, we speak as the kings bring revival. And we need to see revival in our church today. We emphasize that. And one king that saw revival was Hezekiah. Previous messages, we've talked about some of the revival he's brought. But I wanted to remind us tonight, in this chapter, we see how that is opposed. That when we do take a stand for God, as much as it might seem like it shouldn't be that way, we do have opposition, and we need to stand firm. And just to start this off here, I, I, when I thought about opposition, you know, if you play a sport, you know about opponents. You have an opponent that comes out, right? And I didn't play as much in the way of sports in high school, but I know I, as I did something called the academic team, we had opponents, and it could be a pretty intense thing. And what you'd do is you'd have buzzers, and you'd buzz in if you had the right answer, right? But it made me nervous, because opposition will do it. It'll kind of, make, it'll kind of shake it, rattle you up a little bit, even if it is just a, a game. It, it'll, it'll do that. And I had to go to the nearest place I could. A lot of times it'd be the restroom in the school. It would be in, be in another school, and I, I had to just get away and, and talk to God about it because opposition is tough. And the thing is, even in something like that, it's tough. We have opposition also that comes from the enemy of our souls who indeed uh, does come up with opposition. And uh, it's some real opposition that we can have if we're not standing in the name of Jesus it can be very, very difficult for us. And I said that for us too, that when we, just as I talked about that, even in the natural, when you let go, I found out it gives peace. And for us too, as we let go to the Lord tonight and the opposition that we have, it produces peace. But Hezekiah did a lot of good things for the kingdom. Power of revival came. But let's read these verses and um, verse 1. After these things, deeds of faithfulness, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered Judah. He encamped against the fortified cities, thinking to win them over to himself. Father, your word is true, and we ask that you enlighten our path, dear God, that even as many are opposed tonight, that your word will break through 
the dark, any darkness, dear God, and shine forth your marvelous light. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Real opposition comes when we seek revival. And we seek it for this church. We seek it for this area. We want to see God work in Rossville, Logan County, the surrounding area. We want to see that. We want to see it for the United States. But we understand that there's opposition that comes against us, again, from people and spiritual forces. We're pushed. There's a pushing that goes on in the physical, yes, and in the spiritual. We've seen it time and again. And, and you, I probably don't have to tell you the stories, but take a stand for God. Whether it's a, a, in an individual level, we hear about missionaries that do it. There's always that pushback that comes from the enemy. And, and so oftentimes he works through people for that, that to take place. Mm -hmm. And so I want to talk briefly for us just a moment, just for a few moments for those watching and for those who don't know on Wednesday nights, we do have an interactive time, but we do want to share briefly with us for this. And I do remind us that one of the things that we need to understand about opposition is that we should expect it. It's an expectation that we have. Oh, we wish the good times could go on forever sometimes, don't we? But we understand that we have to, in this world, Jesus told us we have to expect opposition to come. Hezekiah sought God and prospered, but now the mighty empire of Assyria has come. And uh, they were the power of the world at that time. And they were coming. And we understand that there's, there's an expectation, but it's been hard for me to, to see, see it points in my life. Um, we had one of the best services that, that we've had that I recall was actually some years ago here at this church. I, I was pastoring and uh, it was a great service. You ever had those services where the power just comes down? It's just, whoa, <laughs> thank you, Lord. And people were getting blessed. Mm -hmm. And it was coming up at the end, and the songs were just flowing, and, and just good stuff was happening. And I, it was exciting. It, it really was. Well, I found out two of the families that were coming, they were, they were family, but they didn't live in the same house with their family. So that, that very night of that service, they got into it with each other. And, they, and actually, the two of the men got into a fight. And so they actually got in a physical altercation. And then after that, neither family came as much after that. This is several years ago, so some, some of you might not remember. But it was just puzzling to me at that time. Why, why is this happening, Lord? And it's just a it kind of reminder. We do expect that when the good things happen for the Lord, we do expect opposition to come. The devil does fight. And so, you know, I try to encourage them and, and, and want to encourage us here that sometimes there are... The, Whatever is coming, you know, that we, we have to expect that. We expect that the enemy is going to come. Because, you see, sometimes we think, well, yeah, there's all those folks out there. Yeah, the devil's going to get them. You know, we're, we're pretty safe in here. The northern kingdom of Israel and many other nations were taken over by Assyria. Judah may have very well thought themselves to be safe. Hey, look, good stuff's going on here. But guess what? The devil doesn't play fair, does he? He's going to come after you. Whatever he sees a weak spot or spot that he can. And so it's a reminder that there's an expectation. This is not to get us down. There is a second side of this, and we'll come to that in a minute. But I, I do want to remind us of this because um, we, we have to expect trouble to come in the good times, as we might call them. Don't all, they don't last. And well, how does that happen? Verse 11. I, mean, I want to go to verse 11 and talk for just a few moments there in this chapter. Well, what did, what did the king of Assyria do? This is what they were saying. Assyria was saying to God's people. Does not Hezekiah persuade you to give yourselves over to die by famine and by thirst, saying, the Lord our God will deliver us from the hand of the king of Assyria? He's saying, you're going to die by hunger and thirst if you follow this God, uh, 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 the Lord God. And they were threatened. They had other kind. It says there were all kinds of threats that these guys gave against God's people. And Assyria was known for that. They were a fearsome enemy. And uh, the attack came, and uh, it was, I'm sure, a shock to them. And there's some things that, and some steps they did. But I do want to say this for us, that there have been many people, individuals, that thought, you know, that I, I'm safe because of what all I've done and what's happened. But we do understand for us that there have been many people that have served God and, and done done well, but that have done better, maybe but done better than I have, you and I have, but yet they fell. Well, why did that happen? Because they didn't, they weren't ready, they weren't expecting it to happen. They thought they were safe. They thought everything was okay, and they didn't stay connected with God like they need to be. And the reminder is we take we stand and take heed 
lest we fall. Amen? So I, I stress this to us. It's a, it's a little bit of a harder message for us tonight, but we stress it for us because we don't want any of us to fall. In these last days, we don't want any of us to fall into a trap that it, it can't, you know, oh, it can't happen to me. You know, you know who it did happen to? King David. I don't have time to tell that story, but probably you think, it, probably one of the thoughts he had is, look at all that God has done. It can't happen to me. Lord, help us to have an attitude that or for the grace of God, where will we be? And uh, we don't understand. Sometimes it, it doesn't make sense to us. The, the Bible is careful here back in verse 1 to say, after everything Hezekiah had faithfully done, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, says, hmm, I'm going to win these cities for myself. It almost, is, it almost is intentionally to contrast it out. There's another story in the Bible where that happens. It's the story of Abraham. God says to Abraham one day, Abraham, take your son, your one and only son whom you love, and go sacrifice him. It's like, hmm. Why, that doesn't make much sense, does it? It doesn't make much sense at all. Why, why would it, when things are going good and the promises come, why would these attacks and this opposition, why would these things happen? I, my encouragement to us tonight is we serve a good God whom we can trust. We can trust him. We can believe him that what he says, that he is working out a plan in each situation. As we trust him and, and stay with him, it is going to come to pass good for us and not evil. We have a trust. God has not left us behind. I believe he has a good work ahead for us in spite of opposition that we might have. He has a good work. And so how does that happen? How does that happen? I'm going to touch on two things very briefly with us tonight. If we take action, sometimes we do the things we know to do. God blesses that. And we also speak words of faith. Hezekiah spoke to the people, and the people took heart from his words, the Bible says. Right. And so we speak into good things. And I do encourage us, and we'll talk a little bit more about that for those folks that are here with us tonight. We do want to mention that, but I want to spend a little bit more time with us here. And that's in verse 20. Verse 20, if we could. In these times, we're, we're, not, we're not bashful and afraid because he's the same God that's brought us through everything that you and I have already come through. He's the same God. He's the same God. We cry out and get help to pray. Verse 20, the Bible says this. Now, because of this, King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, prayed and cried out to heaven. We pray and get others to pray. Amen? Get somebody to pray with you. We need that. The, the loneliness it, it is, can, can invade us if we're not careful when opposition comes to us. We think we're all alone in this fight by ourselves. And if we were by ourselves, we wouldn't make it. But how many of us know those that are with us are more than those that are with them in the world? Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for that tonight. You know, we many have been sick with COVID and different things. And I, I, I've said it before, and I'll say again, you know, for, for me personally, the sickness, well, the COVID sickness wasn't as big a deal as it was just the isolation that was enforced. Just having to be alone and away from everybody is really hard. And in that loneliness, it was something I realized I had to do, and I'm thankful for the technology that helps us take advantage and make sure that we're praying and have others to pray with us and agree with us encourage us in this time because as we pray together as we stay together there is no opposition that can overcome us in the name of jesus you remember jesus was opposed right there was the, the, they talk about that he had a year of uh, uh favor that uh, people were blessing him and everything was going well but you remember also there was the time he was very much opposed by all sorts of various folks in the the uh, upper echelons of society and he eventually was killed for for the Lord's work. And I said that for this. If they opposed him, they'll oppose us also. But at the end, not a hair of our heads will be harmed if we trust the Lord. Amen. Even if we're opposed by forces that we don't even understand, we know we serve a God who has victory for each of us tonight. And I, I want to stress that to us. Through the cross and through his blood, there is victory. And when we pray and activate that, as our brother said, we said those prayers don't die. When we activate that prayer, verse 21 says this, Then the Lord sent an angel who cut down every mighty man of valor, leader and captain in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned shamefaced to his own land. And when he had gone into the temple of his God, some of his own offspring struck him down with the sword there. And we have this. These things are actually verified to us in history from some of the prisms and other things found in archaeology. But 
I digress. I want to. I, I do want to stress this to us tonight. Evil will be defeated. If you're looking and you see that tonight on your phone, or you see that on the on the TV, or if we see evil there, it will pass. It will pass away. The the, the as, as God told Moses and the Israelites coming out of Egypt, the Egyptians you see today, you will see no more. The things that oppose us will be stopped. But I want to remind us that those who stay with God and, and, and the Lord's work will go on forever and ever. It will, the opposition will not win. And so be reminded of that tonight in the opposition that you're facing. God cannot be stopped. Amen? And so many people debunk revival. Many people don't believe. I encourage, encourage you. Believe no matter what opposition comes. Because opposition can take many forms. I don't have time to get into all the forms opposition can take. But I do remind us here. If you're opposed tonight, I just want to say this, the God that you serve. If you know him as Savior, and you invited him in, and you're born again, that same God that's serving in, that's working inside of you is greater than any force you're going to come up against. There's not a thing you can wake up with that you, you can't face. There's not a time and a moment in history from this point forward. If you're with him, you don't have to be without him guiding and holding your hand as they sang tonight. I want to pray with us tonight and just take that time with us. And I just want to pray for you. If you're having opposition tonight, that God is your God tonight and you can find him. This is a short, intended to be a short message, but I encourage you wherever you are, just, to, just seek him right now. Father, I just pray for those right now in the precious name of Jesus who are out there right now in opposition and where they don't know what to do. Lord, I just pray they seek you, first of all, if there's an opposition to their souls and if they're not sure right now if they died or if you came back, they're not sure if they'd go to heaven or not. They might, they, they, they're afraid they might go to hell. Lord, I just pray for that tonight, that the opposition, dear God, doesn't win. That, Lord, your spirit will break through. That, Lord, they can turn their lives to you right now. Rededicate themselves if they need to right now to be 100% sure that they know they're going to heaven. I pray for them, dear God, that as they, as they pray out, we agree with them. Just as Hezekiah and Amos, the king, Amos, Hezekiah and Isaiah prayed, Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus, we join together, believing for each one that has opposition. And Father, I pray tonight for any that are struggling physically, any that are struggling emotionally, any, dear God, that have opposition from people that are pushing against them, that there is a, just a, a demonic attack maybe upon them or their families. In the name of Jesus, we stand. In the name of Jesus, Lord, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth is loose in heaven. And it's through your work on the cross, Jesus, that we take that stand in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, the opposition does not win, but you win, Father God. And, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you bring victory to everyone opposed right now. And I pray through the Holy Spirit you speak what they need to do, dear God. The actions they need to take, dear God. The words that they need to say coming forth from their mouths, dear God. I pray for them in Jesus' name. That they receive the victory you have for them tonight. Wherever you are tonight, whatever you bring bring to watching this tonight, I just want to say to you, your God is greater. The opposition you face, as you face it, it will flee. You won't see it anymore in the name of Jesus as you stand. Yes, we for a season we have to go through this, the Bible says. But there is victory, and we don't give up. Amen. So I just encourage you, believe tonight, and we love you. We look forward to seeing you again real soon on the broadcast here. God bless you.